It's time to start getting geared up for a winter of Battlefield content. We have news of the Turning Tides DLC, the October update, Battlefield's 15th birthday, and details on the Operations Campaign update coming in November. Let's get into it. I'll start off first of all with the Operations Campaign update. You might have heard me say recently that this was scheduled for October. Well, it's now been pushed to November. An October update is still coming, however, and DICE in this update, along with bugs and fixes, will be changing the way you join Operations matches in preparation for that November update. Now, nothing specific has been said about what this change actually is, but we've known for a while that the matchmaking system for Operations likes to put people in empty servers. Hopefully this change will end up fixing that. There will be a live stream coming very soon for the October update as well, I'm told, which will feature all the information about that October update, everything you can expect. So once that live stream has gone live, I will pick out all the information and make a video for you. Now, the November update will include those Operation Campaigns. This is a brand new take on Operations, where DICE has decided that certain ones will string together to make one mega operation. The idea here is that each Operation Campaign will sort of tell its own story. For example, the first one is called Eastern Storm, and it will string together the latest two operations added to the game, Bruce Seelov Offensive and Red Tide, and together they will tell the story of the Russians fighting in World War I, and then how they turned on each other when they withdrew from the war. There will be another one coming later on in November called Fall of Empires, and this will string Iron Walls and Conquer Hell together, seeing two large empires being knocked down. Now these are both operations from the base game, which means this one, Fall of Empires, will be an operations campaign that anyone can join, anyone can play. The first one is specific to the Russian DLC and will be available for DLC owners or premium members. Interestingly though, it seems that these new Operation Campaigns will be timed offerings. According to the blog post, you'll have to launch Battlefield 1 and jump into the current Operation Campaign running at the time, complete it, and then you can claim a reward. Now this reward is a special battle pack apparently, although DICE hasn't actually said what will be in it, they haven't said it's one of the three battle packs that you can get at the moment, so it might be something totally different to what we've seen before. You'll also unlock the Operations Campaign Codex, and you can complete the Operation Campaign that's active as many times as you want to until it runs out. See what I mean about this being a timed offering? Maybe DICE are trying to entice people back into playing Battlefield 1 by offering you a reward for completing these campaign operations. So that's what's coming in November, and don't forget in October, where we are right now, there will be an update that changes the way that you join operations, and that's in preparation for the November update. But that isn't the only thing that's coming in October. There will be some celebrations of it being one year since Battlefield 1 launched, and it being 15 years since the franchise first launched, with Battlefield 1942. There will be lots of in-game challenges, missions, giveaways and events running between October the 12th and October the 16th, so over this coming weekend. And if my sources are correct, there will be double XP as well. There is a Battlefield Anniversary dog tag that you can equip and unlock if you like to have all the things in your collection. Ever since the latest Battlefest event, it's been very clear to me that there is a massive gaping hole in Battlefield 1 when there aren't events being run all the time, so the fact that there's another weekend of events coming up is really good for me, and I think it does keep people entertained in-game, and as I said, I showed you that poll before, this is exactly what people want to see in Battlefield 1. And lastly, we come to the December update, which includes the Turning Tides DLC. Now, I was hoping that DICE would spill some more beans than they actually have in this blog post when it comes to this new DLC, but I'll make do with what I've got. We got a confirmation of a brand new faction coming to Battlefield 1, the British Royal Marines. Now, considering some of the locations that the Turning Tides DLC will actually offer, we've got Gallipoli, the Zebra Garade, and two more are coming as well, I'm not surprised at their inclusion. 
However, I would have preferred a fully-fledged Anzac faction instead, but they might have only made one appearance on one map, and that would have been Gallipoli. Now, DICE have reiterated that we should expect new weapons, new vehicles, other new maps, and other new content in this DLC as well, so all hope of an Anzac faction isn't lost, but this won't be the mega DLC that the Russian DLC was. I believe we're scaling back to just four maps in this DLC, so less weapons, less vehicles, less content overall, back towards a normal DLC size for a Battlefield game. I think we all expected that, to be honest, but I will be making a video very soon on which weapons I think the Turning Tides DLC would suit. So watch out for that in your sub boxes soon. And that's everything. You're bang up to date with Battlefield 1 again. As I said, there will be a live stream running very soon for the October update, detailing everything about that patch, so I'll be watching it and bringing you all the information as soon as I can. But thank you very much for watching today, and let me know what you think of all of this information down below in the comments. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.